The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Saskatchewan Pulse Growers and BASF. So with the different uh, amount of precipitation in some areas of Alberta and Saskatchewan, the question has come up as to are conditions actually conducive for disease across the prairies this year? And I would answer that by saying there's a number of things that contribute to whether or not the disease is going to happen. Of course, there's the disease triangle that we refer to every once in a while, which is you need to have the host. So obviously you need to have the crop, um, the pulse crop being faba beans or peas or lentils or whatever it is. The second, you need the conducive environment, which across the prairies this year has been very dry in some areas, very wet in some areas. Some areas it's been very, very wet and then has turned very, very dry. And of course, the third component of that is actually the pathogen itself. So you need all three. And I would say in some areas of Alberta, we definitely have all three. So the conditions are definitely there depending on where you are. So if this were my pea, pea field and I was trying to make the decision of whether or not I would spray or not, this is what I would do. I would walk into the field, don't pick an extremely, um, like don't pick the headlands or an area where it's not representative of what the crop is in the field, but walk in a little bit and go into an area of the crop where it's most representative of what you'll see within the field and get down and open the canopy right up. Most diseases that we're concerned about this time of the year um, or throughout the growing season is Ascochyta is one of the big ones. And so Ascochyta tends to start at the bottom of the canopy and work its way up. So it's important to come into the crop and look right to the base of the ground and take a look and see what's going on there. And when I look at this crop, I don't see any lesions at all. So number one, I don't see any disease. So that's the first indication that maybe I don't need to spray. Number two, I'll look at the density of the crop itself and see that it's not going to close very soon. Um, it's, fairly, it's a fairly open canopy. It's very healthy, but it's not really, really tall and really, really dense. So it's fairly open. So if the disease were to move in, the opportunity to come in and spray this crop later is still there. So after taking a look at the actual canopy stand itself and deciding that it's not extremely thick or really dense, it's not really, really tall, I'm going to put my hand into the canopy and I'm going to kind of feel around. How much moisture is actually in here? And when I pull my hand out, it's dry, which tells me that this canopy is relatively open. Um, there's not a lot of moisture being retained in here. So that's another indication that we may not need to worry about spraying because the opportunity to come in and spray this crop later is still there. A lot of pulse crops tend to be in a wetter year under conducive conditions, tend to be a lot higher, a lot taller. And even if it is nice and hot and sunny outside, it still may quite be quite dense and moist and there could be a lot of moisture trapped down inside the canopy. So that's something else that I would consider. So I would come in, take a look at the canopy itself. I would look at the plant, do I see disease? And then I would take a bit of a, get, a, get an idea of what the, um, moisture level in the canopy is and then that's what would help me decide whether or not I should make an application of fungicide or not. When you're trying to decide whether you should make a second application um, of a fungicide, um, you've already made one and, you're, and one of the questions may be how long is this fungicide going to last? Well that will depend on the product but for the most part you tend to have protectant from a fungicide for five to ten days. And that can vary. Sometimes you'll get a little bit longer and sometimes it may be closer to that five than it is to the 10. And it's actually, again, relied on the environmental conditions. If you have a really good fungicide application, and what I mean by that is if, you've, if you're trying to penetrate into a canopy that is a little bit more dense, then you need to do the things that have been suggested by Dr. Tom Wolf, which is to use a smaller droplet size and to use more water. And if you, if you are successful at getting small droplets into the canopy and the fungicide has really good coverage, you're more likely to have it last longer, obviously, than if you didn't have or if it just kind of settled on the top and wasn't able to penetrate into the canopy. It'll also depend on the conditions at the time of spray, how fast the fungicide was taken up, um, did it rain an hour later, how much applicate did you actually have, was it bright and sunny, did it evaporate off, all those things are considerations, but for the most part, fungicides should give you some reliable coverage if applied properly into the canopy and targeting the areas that you're trying to target for, I would say, five, seven, up to ten days. Perhaps two weeks if you're really, really good 
and the fungicide um, has some really good contact has been absorbed by the leaves fairly quickly. The thing to keep in mind is that the majority of fungicides, although they will move some from maybe the surface of the leaf to the underside or vice versa, they may travel very, very minimal amounts within the plant. They are, for the most part, protectants. So if you're putting it on there, you can expect it to um, protect it from any more disease that might potentially come in, but any disease that is there, you're not going to kill it and stop it. So that's something else to consider that you need to continue scouting because the disease situation could change very quickly dependent on the weather. <laughs>